Hello, I'm Katherine Bowers, and I am standing in a beautiful organic green tea field in Kagoshima, Japan. We're here on location for a week to learn all about matcha, ancient Japanese green tea. We'll learn its history and how it's grown and processed. And when we come back, we'll meet a tea master, Mr. Kazunori Honda, a member of the well-known family, the Hondas, who have grown tea in Japan for over 400 years. And we'll find out how matcha came to Japan. ninth century, traveling Japanese monks brought tea seeds back from China. However, tea history in Japan really began in the late 12th century when Zen Buddhist master Isai wrote the book, How to Stay Healthy by Drinking Tea. He opened with the sentence, Tea is the ultimate mental and medical remedy and has the ability to make one's life more full and complete. The increased mental clarity and calming effects from the matcha enhanced the monks' meditations and ability to focus on their spiritual practices. Today's tea ceremony is available to everyone, and the ancient principles established by the Zen Buddhist monks still remain, the essences of purity, harmony, tranquility, and respect. Japan's long-standing tea families continue to embody those same principles. One of those long-standing families is the Honda family. I when I first started looking at the, the matcha business, I thought it would be prudent to include a longtime friend and, and Japanese business associate, Kenny Sambukuya. When we first were reviewing the opportunities, we found that there were two interesting components. One is that my family's long history in, in Japan and my personal relationship with Kenny were crucial. And the reason for that was that uh, Kenny was in fact the person that introduced me to Kazunori Honda. Kazunori Honda is, is our tea master and he is the person that has developed the unique blends of tea that we have under the Domacha brand. My family's involvement in Japan started in 1891. Uh, my great grandfather traveled from China with his best friend Mr. George and um, decided that uh, they would start a business. And uh, at, in 1891, my great-grandfather was actually the vice, U.S. Vice Council in China, and he felt that the business opportunities in Japan were significant. So in 1894, they started a company called Andrews and & George, and it was the first foreign-owned trading company in Japan, and uh, it was very well known and very, very respected. And in fact, my mother used to travel to the Imperial Palace with my grandparents to hang out with the uh, Crown Prince while my grandparents, the Emperor, his wife, 
and um, their guests would play several rounds of bridge. Uh, Andrews and George was also the company that introduced the first car into Japan in 1902. It was a Ford and it was for a very wealthy business, a Japanese businessman. At that time, Japan was, was automobiles were obviously not part of the scene as it was the first car. The roads were designed for a horse and cart. So the tires had to be wrapped in a very heavy, heavy leather uh, to protect the rubber. Kikkoman soy sauce is, a, is another product that most North Americans are aware of, and in fact it's a global product, and, and that uh, product was introduced into the North American market by Andrews and George. That type of legacy is, is the reason that we were able to gain access uh, and some access to the inner circles of the Japan Tea Association and some of the individuals involved with that. Kazunori Honda is one of those individuals. And in fact, my business relationship with um, Mr. Honda would not be where it is today if it were not for my early family history in that part of the world. Many tea fields in Japan are grown on lush rolling hillsides and around strikingly beautiful forescapes. New tea fields are carefully nurtured for two years using soil made from organic composts that are a mixture of sawdust, manure, and sand stored in large open sheds. Straw mulching between the rows promotes a healthy environment for bugs, crickets, and essential nutrients, providing the young tea plant with the perfect synergy for a long, healthy life. It will be another five years before these tea plants will be ready for harvesting. Also, it is not uncommon to see natural wells close by the fields used for supplying the exact amount of watering to ensure a successful harvest. Two to four weeks before the matcha tea leaves are harvested, they are covered with either a modern style of shading such as a nylon mesh or a more traditional style of matting made from bamboo and rice. Shading blocks the sunlight to the tea plant and forces chlorophyll up to the very top outermost leaves, turning the leaves into a vibrant green and adding to the sweetness. Hand picking is done while under the bamboo shading and is a very gentle process which can be performed by workers of all ages. Baskets are used to hold the leaves to prevent crushing. When the fields are ready, Tea cutting machines make their way down the long rows, taking off only the top young leaves. After picking, the leaves are vigorously washed in a deep tub of water and then rinsed. Once they are cleaned, they continue draining while making their way through the conveyor belt process. Finally, the leaves arrive at the air dryer, where they are thoroughly tumbled and dried and then they are taken to cold storage to await processing. お茶の品質を見分けるのにはいくつかのポイントがあります。まず畑の管理、そして製造、仕上げ、そして最後にそれをいろんな色外観並びに内装を見て審査いたします。Before the tea leaves destined for matcha are ground into a fine powder, they are thoroughly examined by the tea master for their texture, color, taste, and smell. First, the color and fragrance of the leaves are compared. Is it a pure green, or does it have hints of yellow or brown? Does it smell earthy or vegetal? 
Most all types of tea come from the same plant, the Camellia sinensis, whether they're black, white, oolong, green, or matcha. These teas are differentiated by their growing, harvesting, and processing methods. The next step in the analysis is to steep the tea leaves in hot, but not boiling water, bringing out their full aroma. Different grades of tea leaves will bring out varying grades of quality, and in the case of matcha, the variances are many. It takes a skillful eye and experienced palate to distinguish the many nuances and create the perfect blend of matcha. When considering which tea leaves to blend for matcha, the role of a tea master is much like the role of a vintner, who chooses specific grapes to make the perfect bottle of wine. Once the leaves are thoroughly infused, the resulting liquid is analyzed for its flavor. Is it smooth tasting or slightly bitter? Does the taste linger on the tongue and for how long? But in fact, the predominant flavor in matcha is known in culinary circles as the fifth flavor or umami, distinctly different from the other four flavors of salty, sweet, bitter, and sour. The matcha is whisked up in hot water using a traditional bamboo whisk and the resulting color and smell are compared. Better quality matcha will have a vibrant green color, while lower grades will have a yellow green or brown shade to them. Finally, the flavor of the matcha is confirmed. Higher grades of matcha, such as ceremonial, should be smooth tasting and full of L-theanine, an amino acid that improves mental clarity. Lower grades will be more bitter tasting, having less L-theanine, but still high in antioxidants called catechins. There are many health benefits. Matcha may raise your energy level for up to four hours while creating a state of calm mental alertness due to the L-theanine found exclusively in green tea. It may also boost your metabolism by up to 40% in regular consumers. And it contains up to 137 times more EGCG antioxidant than steep green tea. It may also help regulate healthy blood sugar levels, support healthy cholesterol levels within a normal range, act as a strong blood detoxifier and alkalizer, and support healthy teeth and gums. In several areas of Japan, tea has been cultivated for hundreds of years. We have made our way to Uji City, Kyoto in central Japan, known as the birthplace of traditional tea. And next, we're going to meet Mr. Sugimoto, who's going to tell us the steps of how they process and manufacture the tea. We are very close to Uji River, so our land is very rich in soil and the climate it's perfect for tea because it's very cold in winter and hot in summer. Old monk brought seeds from China to Japan and Uji was the first place they planted tea. We bring in the rough tea using trucks. Then we unload the teas using forklift, getting ready for the inspection before processing. Our whole factory is operated under ISO 22000, an international standard of safe manufacturing of food. That means our whole factory line is HACCP plant. Now we see the final processing and packaging. Once the tea leaves have been unloaded and inspected, they are set along a conveyor belt to be cut into smaller pieces and sorted. The leaves go through a destemming and deveining process and are then separated by size through an agitation method. One hundred years ago, sorting used to be done by hand, and even further back, destemming was done by chopsticks. 
The result is a dark green, perfectly sized, D-stemmed and D-veined tea leaf called tentia. As mentioned, separating stems and twigs from the tea leaves used to be done by hand and was extremely labor intensive. Grinding the leaves to make matcha was also carried out by hand using small individual stone grinders. Today, the grinding is performed using state-of-the-art technology. However, the same slow, gentle methods are still applied. In fact, it takes one hour of stone grinding to produce a one ounce tin of matcha powder. Granite stones, which have been the stone of choice for over 800 years, continue to be used when producing authentic Japanese matcha. To turn the tea leaves into powder, they are first funneled in between two large stones. As one stone slowly rotates on top of the other, the leaves become gently crushed. The final result is an exceptionally vibrant green and finely ground powder. The fresh matcha is then scooped into a bin and quickly transported to the packaging department, where it is immediately packaged and sealed. Large bags are used to package bulk ingredient grade matcha, which is generally destined for food service outlets, such as coffee and tea bars. The finished product tins with their vacuum seal locks are more commonly found at retail stores, and as in the case of the Domacha brand, many natural health retailers. Well, actually, Domacha is a perfect name for this brand. In Japanese, Do means the way or the journey or the right path, and Ma comes from matsu, meaning ground or rubbed, maybe powdered, and uh, cha, of course, means tea. So domacha is the journey of powdered tea. Once the tins are packaged here in Japan, they're then shipped by air to uh, our Canadian and U.S. warehouses. And the interesting thing to note is that it's not like they grind up the matcha and then it sits there in a warehouse for a month or two, waiting for an order. It's actually when we place the order with our Japanese partners that that's the time they take the leaves from cold storage and they grind it up into matcha and they ship it immediately out to us. So it's very fresh when it arrives on our shores. And from there, we then ship directly to uh, natural health retailers across Canada and the U.S. Um, you'll find matcha in the tea aisle predominantly and uh, also in the, uh, because of the health benefits, you'll find it in the health care department or the supplement section. Uh, we uh, also sell matcha into the uh, tea houses and the coffee bars, so people can enjoy a matcha frappe or a matcha latte. Matcha is far more than just a hot, healthy tea. Matcha powder is added to food and beverages everywhere in Japan, and especially in Uji, where you will find it in many culinary delights. From side dishes of rice, red beans, mochi, and matcha tofu, to cakes, pastries, and fine dining entrees. Matcha adds unique flavor and color to any recipe. Green tea ice cream and sundaes made with matcha are popular in modern day matcha cafes and ice cream parlors around the world. Traditionally, matcha was reserved only for Japanese tea ceremony, served to royalty and high samurai, but now it's been made available to everyone. Let's go see how it's done. The Japanese tea ceremony is not just about drinking tea. It is a spiritual experience, focusing on ritual and simplicity. The host has taken special care to prepare the room for honored guests. The utensils are cleaned and prepared for serving tea. The host does this with graceful movements and intent. Next, he prepares the tea for each guest. He makes a paste first, mixing two scoops of matcha and a little hot water.
more water is added to the matcha bowl, and then using the chasen, a special whisk made out of bamboo, the host vigorously whisks the soupy mixture until a foamy froth appears. The host presents the prepared tea bowl to his guests. The first guest admires the bowl and rotates it before taking a drink. The guest wipes the bowl and each guest in turn repeats these movements. Every step of the Japanese tea ceremony has a profound deeper meaning and aesthetics going back hundreds of years. After the guests have taken a drink of matcha, the host will rinse and clean the utensils again. It can take years of practice to master the art of Japanese tea ceremonies. Even after acquiring numerous certificates, students can spend their lifetime in pursuit of perfection. In Japan, there are many years of matcha in the past. It's not just about matcha, but it's not just about sweets, and it's not just about casual. It's going to be a lot of progress in the future. And now it's just the start of the process. I think the future is excellent. Um, most of the world consumes green tea and, are, and is aware of green tea, but uh, there is there's a large percentage of people that are just learning about matcha or don't know anything about it. So I think that the opportunities are, are excellent. Uh, in fact, we are just entering into the Russian market, the German market, the Brazilian market, and the Finnish market. So I think uh, the future is very exciting. Matcha was actually exactly the same for the last 1,000 years, and I believe it will be the same for the next 1,000 years. But we will keep changing to adjust to the modern life. About 10 years ago, I never thought people in North America would enjoy matcha, but these days, everyone around the world enjoys do matcha, and I'm very excited and glad about it. The future of matcha in North America is extremely bright. Matcha has been in the market there for maybe five, six, seven years, and each and every year we've seen 30% growth. And in terms of customer awareness, we're just barely scratching the surface. So matcha is not a fad. Matcha is a strong health trend that's here to stay. So I believe the matcha future is very, very bright. I hope you have enjoyed our amazing week in Japan while learning all about matcha, its history, production, and many healthful benefits. After all, matcha is more than just a cup of tea.